recommendation of the administrative director to the JOC to approve the minutes from February 20th, 2020 JOC meeting. Motion. So moved. Stacey Cleo. Second. Mark Solly. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any abstentions? Any abstentions? Okay. Any unfinished business? Okay. In addition to the agenda. Okay. Do we need to go through and add all of those? And no. So Funny. as far as new business, you have those in front of you. Um, okay. We don't need to. We'll vote on them in order. But okay. the new business has been presented to be acted upon. Okay. But now that the virtual motion has been um, acted upon, I think we can go back to public comments. I don't see any public. And I think you can go to approval no. meeting. Okay. All right. Uh, new business. Mary Kosick will present the revenue and expenditure reports for March. Mary? Okay, you have the reports in front of you. Don't really see much change from the last time we spoke, except we should expect to see maybe a little bit of savings since the buildings are, you know, the building is shut down. But depending on what we have to do as far as for, you know, equipment technology, you might have a little increase in that. So we're still very tight, but we're watching that. Okay, anything else? Okay, do I have a motion to accept Mary's report? So moved, Karen. Okay, second. Second, Solly. Okay, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any Aye. no? Any abstentions? Okay. Approval of bill listing. It is recommendation of the administrative director to the JOC to approve the general fund bill listing for March 2020 for payment of $422,318.46 in checks written manually in the month of February 2020 for $22,814.15 yeah, $22, for a total of $445,132.61. So moved. <laughs> Mark Manella. Second. Second, Mark Sully. Okay, thank you. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any, any abstentions? Okay, it is recommendation of the administrative director to the JOC to approve the general fund bill listing for April 2020 for payment of $122,981.19 and checks written manually in the month of March 2020 for $10,875.41 for a total of $133,856.60. So moved. Stacy. Okay, second. Second, Karen Hauk. Thank you. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any abstentions? Okay, approved cafeteria bill listing. It is recommendation of the administrative director to the JOC to approve the cafeteria bill listing for checks written manually in the month of March 2020 for $56,675.68. So moved. Thank you. Second. Stacy Cleo. Okay, thank you. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any abstentions? Okay, advertise to sell obsolete equipment. It is a recommendation of the administrative director to the JOC to advertise the sale of obsolete equipment, specifically a chief air jack. So moved, Mark Pinal. Second, Mark Stolle. Okay, thank you. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any abstentions? 
Okay, temporary seasonal student working, worker posting. It is recommendation of the administrative director to the JOC to approve the posting for two temporary seasonal student workers at the rate of $7.25 per hour. These workers will be students or recent graduates of LCCTC. They will serve under the supervision of Mr. George Dudash, head's custodian. So moved, Mark Kelly. Thank you, a second. Second, Leo. Deb, okay. before you vote, um, when we make the selection, you will know the names and we'll give you a little background on who we chose. So thank you for your support each and every year, giving a couple of our graduates the opportunity to provide service to us, but also make a couple bucks. Okay, thank you. All right. Question, question here. Go ahead, Mark. I mean, M M Bob. Question, is this contingent upon the school being open or is it not affected in any way by uh, any of the uh, limitations imposed by the governor? It may, it may, but this gives us the authority to move forward and then we can assign the work um, as allowed. Okay. Okay, Fine. So, so this is, okay. All right, any other questions? For concerns, okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any abstentions? Okay, first reading of the 2020-2021 budget. Um, it, well, uh, don't you have a presentation, Mr. Rich? I do have a presentation. Okay. All right, give me a second. You turn the volume down on your phone for this. You should be seeing the uh, presentation. So can, um, I can't see the chat or anything, so I assume you can hear me? Am I coming through on that? Yes, you're coming through. Yes, just fine. They're nodding their heads? Okay, thank you. All right, so uh, you also were given a, what we call uh, really a line by line budget as well as this summary presentation. Uh, I will go through this and Mary and I are available for questions. I would encourage you to um, I, uh, e either um, go ahead and voice your question at the time um, or put it in the chat and we'll address it, your choice. Okay, so what we're looking at here is a less than a $60,000 increase in total as far as uh, what, what we're asking for in terms of revenue. So we are at about, uh, we were about 6.9 last year. We're about 6.99 asking for next year. How did we get there? Okay, so last year, our local revenues were 5.4, and we're actually projecting a decrease in revenues, and here's why. What we've been doing is uh, we were able for a few years to have solid numbers, 400 and above, but the last couple years, we have not hit those targets. So although it looks like a, uh, a decrease, we are actually being, uh, I believe, a little more accurate in what we're going to get. So if you look there, in 1920, we were projecting 390 students at $12,250. Uh, next year, we were project projecting 375 students at $12,500. So we are asking for a $250 uh, increase per student uh, to get to that uh, $60,000. So um, now in previous years, we have not included the revenues that we have gained from uh, our cyber classes. And let me explain how that works. Uh, our county partners do take advantage of us in the following fashion. We do have a room called the Lawrence County Cyber Academy where any one of your local schools can send a student here um, who is a little wayward. It's not a Cray kid. If you send him the Cray, he's going to be a Cray kid. 
You know, it could be for credit recovery. You know, uh, Laurel this year, we sent a student, wasn't hitting a lick, was not hitting a lick, um, came over here, felt to be in a safe environment, liked the uh, computer room all day, took a liking to Mrs. Haynes and went from failing everything till we put him on credit recovery. He's going to pass the year. And I, I could go on and on about uh, success stories like that. But for the 2021 school year, we are budgeting uh, six students at $45 a day for over $48,000 in revenue. So uh, overall, we're looking at a decrease in revenue of over $84,000. Now, this slide is pretty significant. Uh, I, I went through it there line by line, but I would like to provide Mrs. Kosick an opportunity uh, to provide any um, details that perhaps I overlooked relative to this slide or give anybody any an opportunity to ask any questions relative to this slide. Mary, anything I missed? You covered it as far as the local revenues. Did you unmute yourself? Because I didn't hear anything. Did you hear me? Can you hear me? I can hear you, Mary. Okay. Yeah, as far as local revenues, you've covered it, Mr. Rich. Hold on a second. Huh? She's, Mary said that you covered the local revenues. Okay, thank you. Jeff Hammerschmidt, I have a question, please. Go ahead. Uh, we're doing this budget as everyone's doing a budget, but uh, how's, how would this be affected if the state doesn't give it as much money or flat funds it? I mean, how's that work? We don't know. Yeah. Um, so we have it's a hard. budget. Okay. We're passing a budget based upon expectations. If we go through a first and second reading, I'll, I'll draw a parallel. So a, a few years back, we passed the budget and the numbers didn't come in uh, like we thought they were going to be. And we were a few hundred thousand dollars under in revenue. We had to make cuts at the beginning of the year. Um, we can only operate and you're going to have to do the same thing back at the home school under the assumption of uh, flat funding. I'm Can I add something there? Yes, please. So the majority of our budget here that we're talking about for revenues is your um, local revenues. So really, as far as state revenues, what we're looking at, the only one that I see that would be a significant number, um, because I don't see them flat funding Social Security or retire retirement reimbursement, because that is a formula. So our main one is our vocational education. And if they flat fund, then we're talking probably about uh, 55 to $60,000 is the difference between 1920 and 2021. So that's what we would really have to look to make up for. So then that would be in the decrease. We would be short that money. That is correct. Okay. Okay. And last year we were short and we had to make cuts as well. Am I correct? Um, yes, and we did manage to come in under budget again of about $170,000. If you'll remember, it was, it was tight. It was tight, but uh, we right. did it. Okay. But what about the Perkins money? Well, the Perkins, that's about 14000 but I think we were a little bit better than 200000 this year, aren't we, Mr. Rich? Yeah, so we are expecting the Perkins money to be in the neighborhood of $200,000. Since I've been here, it's been up to 220. It's been down to 190. You know, we, we count on about $200,000 each and every year from Perkins. Okay. And that would be federal revenue. Mr. Rich, I realize this doesn't have anything to do with the budget, but um, can you tell us right now how many students are have applied i know that you emailed a couple of days ago yes so um we did a nice pivot and created a uh, virtual application process and um what mrs lynch can been doing she is doing and we are currently at 62 applications right now um that's 
fairly typical for this time of year, but you know, uh, by the end of the school year, we, we we need that to double. What I could see happening is um, we work this through the end of this school year. We work it through the summer, and also I could see some students uh, joining us at the beginning of the year as well. So you know, obviously, um, that's our lifeblood. That's our local revenues. Um, so we're, we're, we're doing what we can to, uh, we're going to probably have to do some promotional events this summer to uh, make sure that we have the attention, the attraction, and the numbers that we need to substantiate the budget. How many outgoing seniors do we have? Um, right around 120. I know that our district um, put it on the face and our Facebook page uh, with a virtual um, application. So that might be a suggestion if other districts haven't done that. Yeah, we would appreciate that. Morgan has been working with the guidance counselors throughout the county. Uh, we, we put it on our own um, Instagram page that, that they monitor. Uh, that, that we administrate. We also have uh, each class has their own Facebook page. So um, as far as I can tell, we're getting local cooperation. Okay, I'll come back to any questions that you want, but I'm going to move on to the uh, next slide. All right, so state revenues. We're at now at the time uh, that this was built, we were looking for an, an increase in uh, state revenues, um, an increase in the vocational subsidy, an increase in Social Security and retirement subsidies due to the increase in salaries and increase in estimated reimbursement percentages. So that's how that got to the uh, $128,000. Uh, Mary, you you commented on this a little bit previously, but would you care to revisit that again? Again, the, my main concern would be the vocational subsidy if we didn't get that 58,511. Like I said, I've never seen, doesn't mean they couldn't, but your um, social security and retirement reimbursement is based on a formula and I've never seen them flat fund that. It's usually basic ed and all your other subsidies. So they could pull that and we may not get the 58,000. But there are some line items in the budget that we have that you know we could hold up back on Mr. Rich for example like the 60,000 we have an equipment that we do you know in case we get that grant have to match funds. That's an right. item that, you know that going forward we don't spend right away anyway so we'll hopefully until we know what the state's going to do we won't be spending that money. So that goes to Mr. Hammerschmidt's uh concern relative to revenues and um, how are we going to know what, what we get. There is money in there that's not spent right away that we can hold on to that if and when our revenues are less than these federal or, or local or state projections that we would then make the necessary adjustments to the budget. But as it stands right now, um, we are budgeting for $128,000 increase in state revenues based upon Ms. Kosick's explanation. Has the vocational subsidy ever been less than that? Or, or is that a pretty sure thing for that to come through? So it's it's per student. So, um, so you take your per student times your number of students and, and that's what you get. So uh, as far as have they, de they have never decreased or cut it on a per student basis uh, since I've been here. Okay. And it's based on the previous year. So they're not looking at 1920 numbers. They're looking at 1819 numbers, correct, Mr. Rich? Yes, so they, they run a year set in stone already. Okay. Mr. Rich, when you say that we could change um, the budget at any time or make adjustments, is that any time throughout the year? Am I correct in thinking that? You are. And what I mean by change is not necessarily that we would go in and ask you to move budgetary numbers. Uh, 
typically uh, what we're talking about when Mary and I are talking about this are those areas that we can control expenditures, we then uh, control. Uh, so what, I'm looking at it more in that sense rather than ch uh, allocating from one line item to another, if that makes sense. I, I guess what I'm saying is at the rate that the state is going, we're not going to have a budget from the state for several months. So let's assume that the state doesn't give us a budget until October and they flatline us with vocational subsidy at that particular time, then we could go in and, and change our budget. Yes, like, you, could, you could take action to reopen the budget and then you could take action to make the necessary changes based upon the um, financial situation that has changed. You're exactly correct on that. Thank you. Any other questions there? Okay. All right. Our federal subsidy is our Perkins. And um, uh, we are estimating the 214.190 that uh, we got last year. One of the areas of the federal budget that actually has increased is career and technical education. I'm going to remind everybody that um, we are from a Perkins 4 to the fifth generation of Perkins 5. Um, I got a contact yesterday and today about some adjustments that we need to make. Uh, I told you about our, our local needs assessment that we had to submit um, in order to even get approval to write the grant. So I'm working with our monitor, if you will, from Perkins, from the Bureau of Career and Tech Ed. She and I have been in communication the last couple of days. So once, once we get that squared away, uh, then we will actually be able to apply for the grant. So more to come on that, but you know, with $200,000 in the balance, it's, it's definitely worth, um, worth the work and the extra hoops that we have to jump through the federal. We, we pay our, uh, Perkins aids with this money. We have five Perkins aids with this money. And we also pay for a portion of the co-op counselor, uh, with this money. Any questions on the revenues relative to the federal subsidy, which is the Perkins money? Okay. All right, expenditures. As you're well aware, there's there's no surplus here. There's no deficit here. It's a zero-sum game from July 1 to June 30th. So our expenditures are projected to the dollar the same as our revenues. So it again is six million nine hundred ninety one thousand two hundred twelve dollars some of our expenditures then we are looking at a very small increase in health care costs uh, we did put in a salary increase in the budget so obviously if negotiations come in lighter than that projection then um, those salary increases will not be at that $78,000 mark. Um, but uh, again, we work very hard to be very conservative on our revenues and very aggressive on our expenditures. Uh, retirement, there is a small increase from 34.29 to 34.51, and you know that statewide. Uh, Ms. Kosick, would you like to comment on the health care costs and why the small increase? Overall, the average increase for our health care consortium was 2.04%. So we were on the low end of that, which is very good news. Um, so that's off to the career center. Okay. Any questions on health care, uh, salary increases, or retirement? Okay, expenditures, regular education. So this is uh, an increase of a um, little less than $100,000. Uh, 
there are pri primarily a lot of teachers in here. So it's it, the largest thing is uh, wages and benefits. We did do some purchase services, which are some cyber classes. So previously, if a student became grade deficient, we would have to send them back for, to their home school for credit recovery and they could not stay. So we have purchased um, through Edgenuity uh, the opportunity for these kids to do credit recovery here at no additional charge to the home schools. And we keep them here rather than lose that student lose that opportunity and then we lose that revenue. Um, also, there was a big Chromebook purchase in this line item last year. Uh, and there is not that large uh, expense within this category this year. Questions on regular education? Okay. Learning support, which is our special education. We do have five special education teachers. So the largest expenditure in this category is salary and benefits. We are also going to um, utilize a new ELA curriculum, which is called Language Live. And uh, what it does for the learning support student is it's, it's uh, aligns to their level of where they currently are. And then it, it provides us with a program to move them through different levels. It's scripted, it's programmatic, and it's proven for results. So currently our teachers are gathering their own uh, resources as best they can. This will give them a programmatic, systematic approach with the, the supporting professional development. Keep in mind that out of our uh, 375 students, we're over 30% identified. Many of them are in the regular curriculum, but we do have uh, pullout classes where some do qualify for replacement curriculum in English language arts or in math. So there's a small increase in this line item, primarily due to salary and benefits, but we are going to a language live uh, curriculum. Uh, the live indicates obviously that there is a component online for the teachers to harness during the school day and the kids to harness outside of school for $5,600. Any questions on our special ed expenditure? Okay. Health occupations. There are two teachers in this area. This is our certified nurse aid program. This is our patient care technician. This is our health assistant. Uh, there's a small increase here and that covers the raises and benefit increases for the two teachers. Not really much there uh, it, that impacts that line item. No additional increases in equipment, technology, professional services uh, or the like. Any questions on health occupations? No? Go ahead. All right. Restaurant trades. So uh, this is a growing program. There's only one teacher in the program, Jen Price. We've talked about her before. She's a shining star, 2009 graduate of that program. Her family is in the restaurant business. Uh, she produces a great product, as Dr. Ross will attest to with our superintendent lunches. Um, and with her, with her growing population, we have allotted her some additional supply money. And obviously she will be getting a raise and um, uh, impacting benefits as well. So in addition to her salary and benefits, the primary increase uh, in that category is giving her some more supply money within the restaurant trades. Question of restaurant trade.
Okay. Office technology. Uh, this is Miss Gabe. Uh, for some of you who've been on the board, you may remember a couple of years ago we had two graduates. One had 17 Microsoft certifications, one had 16. They both were accepted to the University of Pittsburgh. This is our management information systems, our computer office technology program. Uh, her equipment is up to date, her uh, software is up to date, and uh, the only increase in that department again is just for her salary increases, her benefit increases. Office technology questions. All right, the trade. Now there, there are several, there are several teachers here uh, within the within the trades, uh, welding, machine tool technology, electrical occupations, vet tech. So uh, to to name a few. So you can see that it's a rather large line item, but we're actually projecting a decrease here in this line item of about uh, $15,000. Where's that coming from? So Linda, we are an increase in salary and benefits, of course, but a decrease in health benefits due to um, changes of who is taking what within, within that, if there's a buyout in there, et cetera. There's a, we're also decreasing supplies here We've looked at their spending over the last few years, and um, we are budgeting a more actual number. So uh, it's a cut on paper, but it's not a cut on program from what they've been using. Uh, we are, though, going to get uh, Vet Tech their own classroom set of Chromebooks. Uh, Ariel is very technological savvy. There's a lot she can do uh, in a virtual environment with the uh, Chromebooks and advance her vet tech assistant program. So that is a $15,000 cut in that area, despite the 6250 that we're projecting for Chromebooks. With the multiple people in those trades, is there any question, comment, or concern uh, for that category 1380? All right, cosmetology and commercial art. So keep something in mind that at the time this budget was built, uh, Jody Cipro was in the budget. I would assume we were going to see a um, decrease uh, from what we pay her to what we pay the next teacher. But um, as, as written here, um, there would be an increase in salary and benefits, again, a decrease in supplies, reflective of what they've actually been purchasing over the last three-year period. But again, uh, Anthony DeRosa, another shining star. I believe I've showed you some of the artworks that he's done. Uh, we've had some winners, if you remember, some Pride and Promise winners uh, who competed in a very selective Slippery Rock art show. If you go down the confluence, you will see – well, can't do it now, but uh, you would see our students' art on display. Um, the Hoyt, he's been working with uh, Kim Kohler-Jones at, at the Hoyt, so we're very excited with the reinvigorated relationship we have with the Hoyt Center and with Mr. DeRosa. Uh, so we are also supporting his program, and he has asked for some graphic design uh, so he can do some screen printing, some graphic design that's supported by the Chromebooks. So he too will be getting a classroom set, and that's another sixty-two fifty. So um, therein lies the increases in that category, including the uh, the Chromebook purchase. Question, comment, concern for Cosmo and for Art. Oil and gas. Jay, this is Jay Parsons. Uh, this is primarily salary and benefits. 
the majority of his uh, equipment. Uh, he does a great job getting the support of industry, and our kids get hired. We are seeing some stable numbers there. I'm curious to see now that uh, uh, how petroleum's gone in the tank a little bit. We'll see what happens with his students uh, next year. But he was finally starting to get some real uh, stable numbers there. And, and his kids have 100% job placement rate when they leave here. So uh, that's our oil and gas program. That's Jay Parsons. And the increase is due to salary and benefits. All right, our Perkins aides. So <clears throat> these are the ones we pay for with uh, our Perkins money. In addition to these aides, as I said, we do pay some for the co-op counselor, but uh, we are projecting a salary and benefit increase with them. So uh, be between the five of them, they're getting about uh, $8,000 in a not only a salary increase but also in a benefit increase they do get benefits for one any questions on our perkins aids you may also recall for those of you who've been around longer we used to have more of them and i would support hiring more of them and, and if you also recall um keep this in mind for for future negotiation that we did propose to grandfather their compensation structure, but any future aides would not get benefits for one, would, would work a six and a half hour day and therefore be more affordable for us, but uh, that was rejected. So um, I'm always willing to revisit that next negotiations, but um, uh, the five we have um, are paid under that current compensation package and uh, don't anticipate uh, uh, bringing it, well, I don't anticipate any retirements, so I don't anticipate any additions. Okay. Pupil services. So this is um, our, our guidance department, which would be the counselor, which would be the, um, the, the secretary, which would be the testing supplies and everything else that goes along with the guidance department. Uh, so the only increase though there is their supplies are pretty steady. Their costs are pretty fixed outside of salary and benefits. Anything on 2100? Okay. Counseling services. These are outside counseling services uh, that we utilize um, and there is a, an increase an increase there but it's still a very small portion of our budget at two thousand seven hundred twenty five dollars do we pay that by the hour or is that contract no, that's a lump sum that's actually the drug and alcohol commission yeah. Okay, thank you. So they you. doubled their rates? I think we get a few more services, don't we, Len? I think there's- Yeah, so for example, we not only have our student support program where they come in for that, but um, we have had students with uh, drug and alcohol issues where we've had to capitalize upon their services and coordinating um, school, home, and treatment. I don't know if the $1,000 was on the money last year compared to the 27, 25, but certainly, um, uh, and I can't, I can't think of that off the top of my head, whether that 1,000 was on the money or whether that was under compared to what they spent, but uh, we can compare um, actuals on that. And look and the see 18, to a specific guys, answer. It actually, I think what happened was, is in 1819 at the end of the school year, because a lot of times we pay for some of that at the end of the school year, we ended up spending 2725, but we had already passed our 1920 budget at a thousand. So I, you know, 
due to seeing what we're spending now, we've increased it going forward. That you are correct. Yeah, that I remember that. Okay. Technology services, we are looking at a decrease uh, due to our E-rate portion of the network upgrades. I'm working with Scott Pounder. He needs um, uh, to, to clean up our E-rate uh, application and some other things, but we haven't got uh, to that right yet relative to everything else. But uh, now that it looks like things are closed, we can probably get to that. But uh, the, the decrease is related to E-rate. The library, the only increase there is due to her salary and benefits. Her supplies remain the same, and she also does some work as our co-op counselor. I do have some long-term plans for the library for the 21-22 school year, but I'll keep you apprised of those as they uh, develop. Staff development. So... Um, the, the cut here is basically uh, tuition reimbursement, right, Mary? Yes, that's correct. Sorry, I lost my speaker. <laughs> <laughs> so this again is more reflective. We have we have been budgeting for tuition reimbursement and have not been seeing the amount budgeted. So look, comparing it more to actuals, uh, we put a decrease in here. Is that, does that include um, like when teachers take classes and then that's reimbursed? That's exactly, that's exactly. it. So with the hiring of relatively new instructors, vocational instructors, um, like for example, the, the cosmetology, we can assume that the cosmetology teacher will not be vocationally certified in education. Um, so that would also that would be an increase to that, right? So that's taken into consideration. Well, it wouldn't be because you didn't know that Mrs. Cipro was retired. Yeah, we didn't know that she was retired, but um, the twenty-eight. We we haven't come close to the twenty-eight thousand. Uh, we do have some teachers who are finishing up uh, their VOC one completing, and, and therefore on a VOC two, and um, have completed their twenty-four credits. So we're not looking for um that much in tuition reimbursement and uh, the, the we're just going by the fact that the eleven thousand dollars has been um a, a closer number to what we've been experiencing lately thank you i guarantee the cosmetology teacher will not be voc certified I mean, right. right right i mean we've, we've gone over that track before uh, you know, you bring them in, they need 60 credits. So that's that's what we're talking about. So unlike when you hire an English teacher who's set ready to go, maybe they go for their master's. When we bring in a vocational teacher, we're bringing them out of industry. We put them in a classroom, then we send them to college. And they have to get 60 credits in order to uh, maintain their license. All right. Administration. Uh, obviously, there are several bodies underneath this, and in addition to salaries and benefits, uh, there is a computer line item here for admin computers, and uh, there's an um, increase in some dues and in some fees, uh, memberships for outside agencies, and and the like. But the uh, primary, the the primary driver here would be the equipment. And then obviously uh, salary and benefit increases would be the, the two largest areas of the administrative budget. Um, within the administrative budget, that also includes um, that also includes uh, secretaries who work in that department. All right, other. Uh, administration, we're looking at a decrease uh, primarily due to retire. So there's, there's other post-employee benefits. 
And as those expire, we are seeing a decrease. Is that accurate for this line item here, Mary? That is correct. All right. So if you're familiar with early retirement incentives and the like and who qualifies for them as they exhaust, that's why we are projecting the decrease in this 2390 for other post-employment benefits. You may have heard the term OPEB back at your home school meetings. <coughs> Excuse me. The nurse, um, same nurse, same supplies. She'll receive a salary increase, but she's now, um, she's now a uh, employee with one child. Uh, her second child is in the military and, and has his own benefits and she's no longer married. So that, that benefit structure is what, uh, what caused that, um, even though she's getting an increase in salary, a decrease in benefits there of about $3,000. The business office. So we talked about um, the other administration, but OPEB actuarial services are every other year and approximately uh, 7,400. So there's a, there's a decrease here in the outside service for actuarial services, but we obviously then if it's every other year, we would expect an increase for next year. So that's relatively a similar budget item within uh, $1,500, $2,000. Go ahead. Okay. Maintenance. So this is George. Uh, obviously, that's not all his salary and benefits, but this is where we put repairs and equipment and, and projects, be they floors, et, et cetera. So um, I'm going to press pause on, on this slide because we're looking to do some things and uh, finance them over time. Uh, Ms. Kosick, would you care to embellish a few things we've been working on? like our in-house 2D, uh, the floors, et cetera. The roof, the air, the air handlers on the roof. Sure. Um, when we first started, George wants to replace three air handlers up on the roof and then also do the rest of the lighting throughout the building. So 2D has a program where they'll actually let us pay over so many years, usually five years, the max. Um, but looking at it, it was going to cost us 7%. So I came up with some ideas. However, when it all came down to it, we had the academic floors in the 1920 budget um, to do. And I think if you remember, the bids came in way too high. So we decided to hold off on it. Well, now it's come to the point where we're not going to get it done by the end of the year, nor do we even know if we could get bids to get it done by the end of the year. And that was $47,000 budgeted in the 1920. So what we did is we decided to take that 47,000 and buy the rooftop units and the lights and we come in at about $48,000. So now we're just gonna budget. I have budgeted what I thought was going to be payments over time. And I think it's at like $2,000 per month. Well, what's left after we pay for the equipment out in 1920 will be the labor to install the rooftop units, and it's about $10,000. So we have that budgeted. So we're going to be able to do that. And one of the reasons we're pull, um, waiting to do the flooring also is that PlanCon, which is um, the reimbursement program for projects through the state, um, they are looking to hopefully fund that soon, but they've also added on a maintenance section, section of that. And what they're saying is, is they will either fund the maintenance partially or, you know, fully, it depends, but it will be based on your, um, on your numbers as far as free and reduced will be priorities, but it will also be based on the necess necessity of the project and asbestos being the number one thing. So I would probably take a look at that 
in the future, if we see that's going to be funded, then we take a look at doing at our floor, doing our floors, and we, you know, will apply for that money so that we can have that partially, if not fully, grant funded. Does that so, make sense, to everybody? So, in sum, in sum, what we're doing is is we we took this two D concept. But just based upon our own circumstances, we're able to, to do that in-house and um, save us the uh, 7% and, and build off the floor money that we didn't use in the 1920 budget and then have labor in the 2021 budget uh, for that. So we, you know, the, the one thing that we've done a pretty good job of is once we got the big projects done of the HVAC and the roof, uh, George has done a very good job getting back to maintaining the building and not letting the facility get ahead of yourself. So we think this is uh, very important. And again, you know, it's it's about uh, $35,000, $36,000 less in his budget than last year. And, and, and we, we think we're fortunate to be able to do some things because, because of the timing. So um, I'd be happy to take any questions on this maintenance line item and what we're trying to accomplish. I, th I think it was a great call on going to the air handlers. Great job. Yeah, I think Thank so you. too. I think it's a good idea. I agree. Thank you. Okay, security. So um, we are increasing our security budget uh, we do contract services for our school resource officer through Newcastle Police Department. There's an increase there, but also we're increasing uh, our equipment and our cameras. This is a 144,000 square foot facility, so not only do we need to continue to replace, but we also need to continue to uh, expand both internally and externally. So primarily between the increase with NCPD and our increase in equipment, that's why you're looking at an additional $22,000 there for security. All right, student activities, a uh, lot of skills USA here. Um, increase in benefits and other expenses is a very small uh, portion of our budget anything specifically on student activities that we need to add there mary for as far as an explanation no i think we're good and this would be one area that we'll actually save in in the 1920 school year correct one yeah because we had a lot of activities get canceled right so good for savings bad for kids we don't like exactly it Okay, cafeteria transfer, zero to zero. It's sustaining itself. Uh, keep in mind that this, uh, in, in seven, eight years ago, that was a ninety to a $100,000 loss on the $6 million budget. This community eligibility provision, the work with nutrition group, it's sustaining itself. So I'll take zero in a cafeteria transfer any day of the week and twice on Sunday. And we were due to go out to for bed with the um, cafeteria this year. However, due to COVID-19, they have it allowed us to extend one one month, so or one year, I'm sorry. So I think we're gonna opt to extend for one year. We'll get that paperwork to you. It needs to be approved by the state first, and then you'll have to approve it next month. Thank you. Hey, Lynn. Yeah. I know at, th at that time, it was a difficult decision and it wasn't a popular decision to do what no. you did with the cafeteria, but it was a great call in the long run. Thank you. You know, and, and to be fair, we asked them, I said, you know, come up with your own cuts, give us something. And, and it was, it was difficult, but uh, paid off in the end. And, and uh, 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 we got a, we got a good one down there as our um, head cook and we got a good management with, uh, uh, with nutrition and it, it, it's running good. All right, so with that, that is that is our presentation for the 2021 budget. I'll be happy to take any um, 
questions that you may have come to mind um, after you have seen this entire budget. Are there any questions on the budget presentation? Okay, hearing none. Chairwoman Deb, you are up on letter F. Okay, it is a recommendation of the Administrative Director to the JOC that the first reading of the Lawrence County Career and Technical Center's 2020-21 budget in the amount of $6,991,212, wait, $6,991,212 in $6,991,212 with the district's responsibility of $5,281,250 and then $4,687,500 for regular tuition and $593.70, no, $593,750 for special ed tuition can be approved. Do I have a motion? So moved, Mark Pinella. Second. Second, Stacy Fleo. Okay. All right. Any discussion? Okay. Roll call, please, Nancy. Mrs. Alabaster. Yes. Mr. Angelou. Yes. Mrs. Bill. Yes. Mr. Curry. Yes. Mrs. Fleo. Yes. Mr. Hammerschmidt. Yes. Yes. Mrs. Hauk? Yes. Mr. Pinella? Yes. Mr. Stolle? Yes. Okay, it's nine to zero. Motion passes. Okay, thank you. Okay, health insurance rates for 2020-2021 school year. It is recommendation of the administrative director to the JOC to approve the monthly rates for health insurance for the 2020-2021 school year through Highmark Blue Cross Blue Shield. The health insurance in increase is in the amount of 0.3%. Uh, PP Blue qualified high deductible health plan for active employees. Uh, and then the retired, it's all, it's, the different ones are listed, okay? Um, Anyone want to make a motion, please? I so Karen, 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 you was that a motion? Yes. Yes. Okay. Karen Hauk first, second, 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 second Stacy Fleo. Stacy Fleo second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any abstentions? Aye. Okay. All right, dental insurance rates for 2020-2021 school year. It is recommendation of the administrative director to the JOC to approve the monthly rates for dental insurance for the 2020-2021 school year through PSEA Health and Welfare. And they are listed down below. Do I have a motion? Motion, Jean. Okay, Jean. Second, Second Karen Hauk. All in favor? Or I'm sorry, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any no's? Abstentions? Motion passed. Okay, vision insurance contract renewal. It is recommendation of the administrative director to the JOC to approve the vision insurance contract renewal with vision benefits of America VBA for the period of July 1, 2020 through June 30, 2022, and the rates remaining the same. Single, 650, and family, 1650. Do I have a motion? So moved, Ms. Foley. Mark. Second. Second, Jean Beals. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any abstentions? Motion passed. Agreement with Dr. Carlos I. Flores. It is recommendation of the administrative directors of the JOC to approve the agreement with Dr. Carlos Flores for professional services for the 2020-2021 school year. LCCTC will pay Dr. Flores a fee of $300 plus $350 for each physical exam provided. So moved. Mark Mark, Pinella. Mark. Second, Mr. Foley. Okay. Okay. And any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any, Aye. any abstentions? Concurrent enrollment with Butler Community 
Butler County Community College. It is a recommendation of the Administrative Director to the JOC to approve the 2020-2021 concurrent enrollment agreement with the Butler County Community College. Karen Howe, And second, Mark Scully. Okay, all of, any discussion? Hey, Lenny, could you explain this a little bit to us? Uh, yeah, I can explain. So, concurrent enrollment. So, we have students, the last period of the day, well, we offer three courses at different times of the day where they're taught here by our people, but they're gaining credit at Butler County Community College. So, they're enrolled not only in the high school, but they're also enrolled in Butler County Community College. So, we offer uh, three credits for public speaking. We offer uh, three credits for college algebra, and we offer three credits for um, social studies. Thank you. You're welcome. Do we have any other questions? Students pay the tuition, right? They pay the majority of it. We do have uh, some uh, a tuition assistance and also um yeah we they they're responsible for the tuition there is some tuition assistance available from us or from the community college well we we do have um some from us within the uh pupil services line item of of uh, butler county community college So our districts are paying students tuition to go to Butler Community to get the, the credits. We pay we pay a portion for some of them, yeah. But it's our districts who are paying it because it's our districts providing the budget or not? Is it come out of state funding? So no, the, the portion that we pay is just general fund money. I guess I still don't understand. So who, where does, who's paying the general fund money, state or districts? Well, we, well, we get our local revenues, five point some million dollars from the districts. Yeah. Karen, does that answer your question? Yeah, unfortunately, yes. Yeah. Okay, do you want any other discussion? Any other questions on that item? Okay, uh, could I have a vote, please? Yes. All in favor? Yes. Yes. Any, any no's? Any abstentions? Okay, approve the second reading and adoption of the following policies. It is recommendation of the administrative director to the JOC to approve the second reading and adoption of the following policies, and they are listed. Do I have a motion, please? Gene, so moved, Mark Sinal. Gene? Second, Mark Sully. Oh, okay. All right, first was Gene Bills, and second was Mark Scully. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any abstentions? Okay, approve the first reading of the following policies. Is the recommendation of the administrative director to the JOC to approve the first reading of the following policies? And they are listed on your paper. Do I have a motion? So moved, Mark Pinella. Mark Pinella, second. Second, Stacy Cleo. Second, Stacy Fleo. Do I have any uh, comments or questions? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any abstentions? Okay, uh, reports of administration, Mr. Rich. Debbie, you need the two. Oh, um, I'm sorry, I forgot about the addendum. Forgot about the, sorry about that. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, the new business, N, accept intent to retire. Is recommendation of the administrative director to the JOC to accept Mrs. Jody Sebro's intent to retire. Due to the extenuating circumstances surrounding the COVID-19 pandemic, it is further recommended to waive the 60-day notice of retirement. Karen, so Karen Halk and, Hal and Mark Scully, any discussion? Okay, all in favor? Uh, Aye. 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 Any Aye. abstentions? Okay, I know that it will, will be a loss to us because she's been there for quite some time. Okay, approve agreement for electricity. It is recommendation of the administrative director to the JOC to approve the administration to enter into a 36 month agreement in the amount of, okay, 0 0.05314 kilowatts between the LCCTC and IGS Energy for the purchase of electricity. This is an approximate saving of 8% or $3,900 per year compared to the current rate of, and then it's listed how many kilowatts are there. Okay, do I have a motion? Motion to Okay, okay second. I need second. a second. Second, Karen Hauk. Karen Hauk, okay, any discussion? Yes. Uh, is this a uh, contract that is, are we allowed to get out of if we find a better rate down the line within that 36 month period without a buyout? Uh, we will not be able to get out of this contract for 36 um, months. However, I can tell you electricity is about as low. This is like the lowest that it has been in a long time. So we work with a wrap. It's they're pretty comfortable, and it's thirty nine hundred for the thirty six months per year. But on top of that, once we put these rooftop units in and the lighting, we should see additional savings just because our capacity should decrease too. Okay. Do we get any rebates for putting those new lights in? There will be rebates, but not as good as what we had last year. I think they, they've cut them down almost in half is what I was told, but we will get some rebate for those lights. And George has found a good price on them too. Okay. I'm just questioning that because I have several properties that I own and operate and uh, I, I normally try to take the contracts that allow me a, a quick out rather than having to buy something out. So I just wanted to check on it. Thank you. Okay. Is Thank it you. something you want us to reconsider? Or? Uh, no, if that's the uh, best uh, you got for the uh, business, that's fine. I, I deal a lot in residential and uh, commercial properties. So, um, you know, sometimes I get better deals uh, six okay. months down the line. But it, it doesn't matter. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, okay. Anything else? Okay, can I have a vote, please? All in favor? Aye. 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 Did I hear a no? Okay, any abstentions? Okay, and then the last one, letter P, it is recommendation of the chair to the JOC to suspend policy 006.2. Requiring... Did that one. That the first one. I thought we were just putting that on the motion to begin with, as a motion. We were adding that. No, we have to start the meeting with that one. Okay. All right. Okay. I just wanted to make sure then. Okay. All right. Administrative reports. Mr. Rich. Okay. So, um, wow. Didn't think we would be meeting like this, educating like this, working like this. Uh, it's been quite the journey. Um, we passed out over 200 Chromebooks out of the 375 uh, students. Uh, uh, Brad and Scott Pounder have been instrumental in that. Uh, we have a weekly faculty meeting to answer questions and to uh, adjust the ship as it needs be. We've closed the third nine weeks. We're verifying grades. Um, the vast majority of our kids are starting to pick it up here a little bit and uh, get on board now that they realize this is not a temporary but rather a permanent situation. Mr. Milanovic has been labeled a student, if you will, 
in our teacher's Google Classroom so he can check assignments and whatnot. And I'll I'll defer to him in a moment for his report on what he's seeing in those things. But, uh, you know, our kids came here, and I don't know if you saw the article in the paper where they asked us all for comment, but the kids came here for a hands-on experience. So obviously it's rather disappointing that, you know, for 60 of their 180 days this year, they do not get that hands-on experience. Also for our seniors, no NOCTI, no NIMS, you know, those, those, those uh, credentials just are not available uh, this year. So uh, it, it, it's an adverse situation that none of us has to be in, but I, I have to say that the, the, the faculty responded well, switching to a virtual platform. We have been on this Google Classroom, this G Suite journey for a couple years. So um, it, it wasn't all new, but certainly it was a change. So all in all, I think we are doing just about as good um, as we can uh, in this situation. It's not something I wanna go through, but, uh, and quite frankly, working with a small faculty here, you know, there, there are a lot of good and healthy uh, personal relationships, people you like to see, the kids you like to see. And so um, it's, it's, just been, it's just been bizarre. It's just been bizarre. But uh, all, all in all, all things considered, I'm very happy with the progress of this uh, school under this situation. That concludes my report. I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. I don't, you know, obviously you're answering all your own questions in your own um, school districts, and I'd be happy to draw any comparisons. I also got to give a little shout out to the Lawrence County superintendents. We meet two, three times a week in a virtual platform with uh, Joe Mancini from Elwood taking the lead on that. So, um, you know, I appreciate as always all their consultation. Any well, questions on my report? We appreciate all that you have done and bringing all of our kids online. And uh, I think it's a great job that our guidance counselor is doing. Um, you know, I've, I've read all of her things. It's, it's wonderful. So I know that this is not the norm, but uh, you guys have turned it around quickly. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Milanovic. Yes, thank you. Uh, first, I'd like to start with piggybacking off, to, off of what Mr. Rich had stated. Uh, I do have the pleasure of being a member of 112 classrooms. <laughs> and unfortunately, I am failing all of them. Uh, I'm not in there to do the work. However, it gives me the access to see everything our teachers are pushing out. And, uh, you know, we've done numerous all calls. We've done videos. Our teachers are doing an amazing job. Uh, both academic and vocational. You know, there's certain expectations that a lot of people, or I shouldn't say expectations, misunderstandings that people um, think the academic side has a leg up over the vocational side and things like this. Our vocational side has been crushing it. The, the uh, supplemental activities, the videos, the things they've been providing to our students, even though they can't be in the shop, has really been outstanding. And I'm very, very proud of all of them. Uh, all of that is possible thanks to Mr. Windhorst and Mr. Pounder. Mr. Windhorst, all of you had the opportunity to meet through our Pride Promise in previous months. He also took care of setting us up on this this evening and will continue to support us. Uh, our teachers really, really lean on him uh, just because he does have such a knack for the technology and he's got such a kind, he's got such a kind, kind, soul, kind soul and personality. great personality. He's easy to work with, so teachers reach out. And he provides the support that uh, that they need. Uh, great strategies, great ideas, lots of tools to improve our education in, in this difficult time. Uh, Mr. Mr. Pounder has worked with both of our uh, both our teachers and our students, uh, as well as everybody else, uh, to keep this ship running. Uh, Chromebook distributions, making sure the teachers have access to files remotely. Um, 100% our team's just been just been outstanding throughout this, and it's been difficult, but to be quite honest, I have zero complaints uh, other than not being able to see Mr. Rich every day. Um, I, I, I'm very proud of what our staff is doing. I'm very proud of what our technology has done, and that's, you know, that's a thank you to you guys, uh, allowing us to get the things that we've needed over the years that really put us in a position to do this. Whereas just a few years ago, we would have been in a big jam, a big jam. And uh, 
thanks to the things that you have approved over the years, our increase in technology, um, we've really hit the ground running. So uh, 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 other than that, I wish I could announce more. Uh, I miss our kids. I miss my teachers. I miss Mr. Rich. And uh, I miss being able to see yeah, uh, you guys at the meeting. Okay, thank you. Got it. Um, uh, as far as we're teachers, there's a lot of feedback right now. Um, I was wondering, Mr. Uh, Rich and Mr. Milanovic, if possibly, um, if possibly in the fall when all of this is over, that maybe we have a dinner that we could go ahead and honor our teachers and our staff members for all of the great work that they've done. I'm always up to eat. <laughs> Good idea, Dan. I don't have anything to report at this time. Just uh, everyone stay healthy and safe, and hopefully we can see each other soon. Okay, that would be great. Okay, um, Attorney Mangino. Matt. Good. Now you're on Matt. Press control. Uh, I don't have anything okay. to report. But, uh, uh, I don't have anything to report, I but uh, I, I can't certainly ask, answer your questions uh, after the meeting today. But if you have any questions, feel free to email me, and I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Okay. Anybody else have any other questions or comments? Okay. Everyone, stay safe and healthy. Yes, absolutely. Stay, stay safe, safe and healthy. That's that's the key. Okay. Um, all right. Do I have a motion? To so move, Mark Pinellas. Second, Mark Solly. Thank you, Mark. Second. Mark Solly. Second. Mark Skelly. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. We are adjourned at seven fifty-four. Thank you, everybody. Okay, everyone, see you, everyone. All right. Bye. Stay safe. Bye. Thank Bye. You. Bye.